Right, so we've just been demonstrating how watercolors flow, uh, wet colors flow into other wet colors or flow into washes. Let's refine that just down to something else you can practice. And this is where the big guns kick in. Later on you can find this technique extremely useful. First of all, clear wash. In clear wash, we bled a color into an area of just clean water so the color fades and disappears into nothing. Now we're going to do a more focused version of that so that we can create very fine, delicate lines. I have penciled in just a few lines here, very faintly. And now I'm going to go in and just lay down small sections of clear wash. My goal here is to create these lines with color flowing down from a hard edge and disappearing as a soft edge. And I have this dark blue-green that I've mixed up. So in this case, I have a section of wet paper below the first pencil line and I'm following the very top of that wet edge, so actually I have a bit of dry paper factoring in for a good strong color. This is another time I can use my clean brush to smooth that out very slightly and create a very soft edge. Now, what we learned from our previous experiment with the wash is that I can't go in there now and create the next line while that section is still wet. So let's do it again down here. Wetting the space below the next line that I want to create. Please note that I'm wetting a fair distance down from that line. Part of the flow of the paint is giving it some place that it can flow into. Let's try and create our line at the top of this wetted area now. As you can see, the brush is just touching the clear wash on the paper. And hence the paint is flowing down into that area. And I can actually dry my brush slightly with the clean water on it and go in there and just smooth that out a little bit. Now, I stress that you have to wet enough of a distance of paper for that color to flow to somewhere. Let's try and see what happens with one of the common errors here. Sometimes when people first try this, they go very literal and they wet the area immediately below the line they want to create without going very far. At that point, they drop their color in, and yes, it does flow into that wet area, but the flow ends where the wet area ends, which is too soon, and the color has no further place to go. And even if I try to develop it further, I haven't wet beyond this little eighth of an inch or what have you. And we end up with rather a heavy line. It simply doesn't go any further. So it's very important in any of these uh, ways of expressing, give your color some place to go. Now in this case, I've given quite a big distance below the last line. And I can smooth that out with my clean brush. And the color has had a very long way to go. Just as the clear wash down here gave the orange-red color a long way to travel and fade out into nothing, which is what you want for very delicate lines. Now, let's test for drying here. This is the universal gesture to test for drying. Nobody knows why. 
and I think we can do the next line in this row. Our paper is dry enough now. Just so you get a sense of what a sequence of lines would look like if you keep doing this. Smoothing it out with the clean brush. Once again, these spaces are only wet enough to make shiny paper, never enough to make a puddle. So we start to get a sense of how you get a series of lines like this, and this can be very useful in expressing various types of things. Uh, feathers and seaweed and leaf veins and stylized hair and flowy abstract winds and uh, all sorts of things. Let's try giving an example of one where we use too much water. I keep preaching about the puddle effect. Let's see what happens if we wet the paper enough to make a puddle. I think that's a fair load. If I turn my head slightly, I can see that it's not just shiny paper, it's a puddle. And then we'll just start dropping our paint in there. And this is where you start getting a little too much diluted effect. You, you have not too much control of that. Now, at this point, with a synthetic brush, you can actually use it as a sponge and clean that up a little bit. You can keep drying the brush, you can lift up some of the damage. But the best thing to do is perfect your use of water. This is all part of water safety.